welcome to this little video segment. Uh, one of the things in writing chemical reactions that is really handy is to write a chemical reaction using what's called a net ionic equation. The goal of this is to zero in on the interesting chemistry. So uh, the other ions, there will be ions that are just kind of hanging out, uh, kind of watching what's going on, swimming around in the solution, and those are called spectator ions. We don't lose those, they're, they're still in the solution, but to write a net ionic equation, we're going to ignore them and focus only on where new bonds are being formed and or broken. So. Um, in order to do a net ionic equation, what has to be uh, present in the mixture is it first has to be an aqueous solution. Okay, so it's typically not going to be used, for example, for a synthesis or a decomposition. It, it can be, but not typically used for those. Um, you need an aqueous solution, and we need ionic compounds right, net ionic equations, hopefully that makes sense. We need acids and or bases. And how we're going to start this out is we're going to dissociate or separate into ions. Now be really, really careful. Um, when I was just grading the AP test, I saw a lot of students decompose instead of dissociate. We want to dissociate, identify your cation and anion um, for soluble salts, strong acids, and strong bases. So I think it's most helpful uh, to do this with an example, a number of examples. So let me do a few for you. So if I have aqueous solutions of lead to nitrate, so this is what I would call the complete formula solution. And I'm going to go ahead and write my states on the first one, just to make this clearer here. They're combined to form lead to iodide and potassium nitrate. So two ionic compounds form two new ionic compounds and hopefully you will recognize that as a double replacement. Now, uh, if your uh, teacher makes you predict your solid precipitate that forms, you know that all group one and all nitrate salts are soluble without exception. And so we would know that's our aqueous, that makes lead iodide our solid, or you'll need to memorize your net I or your solubility rules if that's what your teacher asks. Now we do need to balance this. That will be very important here. You need a two here and a two there. Now I'm going to ignore states at this point just because of space. Um, my cation in lead nitrate is the lead two plus ion. And when this dissociates, um, so I've got a lead ion and I've got two big nitrates hanging off of it. When it dissociates, all of those separate from one another. So instead of those two nitrates being bonded as that two represents, I am counting those two nitrates. So I'm going to write them with the number in front now. So if each Ki that dissociates, I get a K plus and an I minus, and if there's two of them, I'm going to get two K pluses and two K minuses, I minuses. Okay, so these are aqueous salts, so I'm going to dissociate them. This is a solid. That solid precipitate is sitting at the bottom of the beaker. Do not dissociate your solids. You may want to carry minimally that state down there with you. And then I get two potassium ions and I get two nitrate ions. So you see all of my aqueous salts I dissociate it into cation, anion, cation, anion, cation, anion. I, I didn't decompose this into potassium and, and I2. 
Okay, so I didn't make this I2 because that's now going to be exchanging electrons, which is not happening here. I've got one, two separate iodides. So be really cautious with that. Now, uh, anything that is remains unchanged from your reactant to your product is a spectator. So the potassium is the same on both sides. So it remains unchanged. And my nitrate ion remains unchanged. So the potassium ion and the nitrate ions are spectators. They're watching the interesting chemistry. So my interesting chemistry is going to be lead ion reacting with, and I forgot my two there. Oh man, do you see that? The two. That two has to go to both of those. Common error. Two iodides. Easy to make, especially when you're talking. So, and then I make my solid. This is the interesting chemistry that's happening, and that's what a net ionic does. Um, some of you, over time, won't, you won't have to do all of these steps. You'll get really good at throwing off your common spectator ions like group 1 ions, sodium and potassium in particular, and very often nitrate. Okay, um, I want to do a couple more. I'm going to do them a little faster this time. So I have chlorine gas is bubbled through a solution of potassium bromide. Um, solution of is implied to be aqueous unless you're told otherwise. Now I form bromine, Br2, that would be a liquid, plus potassium chloride. Whoops, that was a mistake. Thinking ahead there. Okay, and that all group one salts are soluble in water, and I definitely want to balance this. Okay, complete ionic. This is molecular. You don't dissociate molecular. You only dissociate soluble salts, strong acids, strong bases. So I'm going to keep that together. I'm going to get two potassium ions. Just identify your cation and anion, and then maybe count them. Two bromides. Molecular, I'm not going to dissociate molecular covalent compounds. My cation is the potassium ion. My anion is the chloride ion. I have two of each of those. So that might help for you to identify the ions in the formula first. And then we're going to cross off spectator. In this case, only the potassium ion was a spectator. In other words, this reaction would have occurred if I'd used um, calcium or um, sodium or lithium. The cation was irrelevant to the interesting chemistry. So this is a single replacement reaction. Chlorine is more active than bromine, so it prefers to be the anion. The more active nonmetal prefers to be the anion. So that's why this reaction would proceed. Okay, one more. I just wanted to give you an example of an acid-base solution mixture. So I've got a solution of sodium hydroxide, NaOH, aqueous slowly added to a solution of acetic acid. You might do this in a technique called a titration, for example. This is a double replacement. The sodium will go with the acetate because it's going to go with the opposite anion. So I'd have sodium acetate. Uh, Acid-base neutralizations are a subset of double replacements and then I would get water. All group 1 salts are soluble without exception. Water would be a liquid. Okay, So we dissociate strong acids, strong bases, soluble salts. So the cation in this strong base is the sodium ion. The anion in this strong base is the hydroxide. Acetic acid is weak. You need to memorize your strong acids. 
So either ask your teacher or look those up. We're going to keep that weak acid. Acetic acid is a weak acid. How do I know it's weak? Because it's not one of the strong, okay? So in case I misspoke earlier, I want to make sure you know that's weak. All group one salts are soluble without exception. So I have sodium is the cation, separated into cation and anion. Do not decompose. Don't forget your charges. I see a lot of that when I'm scoring papers as well, um, is people forget their charges. Water is a molecular substance. It does not dissociate into separate ions to any great extent. Okay, so now my spectator ion is the sodium ion. It's the only thing. So I'm going to rewrite what remains. So don't write ions if it's a neutral formula unit, but you must write the ion charge if you're talking about a separate. Whoops, that looks like a 3 and it should be a 2. Sorry about that. And that would be the net ionic equation. So these take a lot of practice and they're very tedious, but many of you will get quick. And if you're not asked to do the whole thing, you'll be able to jump right to this net ionic over time. So good luck with your chemistry. Thank you for joining me.